Hello and welcome to the Pump House. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Sherlock recently, so I'm going to call today's episode, or this evening's episode, The Mystery of the Thirsty Cows. So the reason why I'm down at the Pump House was hopefully to record this video and say I fixed a problem. Um, I thought it was going to be a mundane problem to fix, but it turns out it's broken and needs some more repair. But I'll set the scene for you. Um, while it's been snowing for the last couple of days, the week before that was really sunny and warm, and so I decided I was going to turn back on the irrigation system and get water back up to the uh, barn and get water up to the cows um, so we could move them into a field that needed to be irrigated by the pump rather than just from rain. So um, I went to turn the system on. It was working for a couple of days. Um, then my wife told me that it stopped working, so I came down to the pump house, and this is what I found. It's probably going to be hard to see in this spooky light. But this is um, some Schedule 40 pipe that was connected to the pump and connected the pump to the pressure tank. Um, it had swollen up. Um, you can see maybe the stretched writing. And the threads pulled clean out of the coupling back there and uh, sprayed water everywhere. So I thought that was going to be an easy fix. I replaced the piping. Um, which, as you can see now, has, has clearly failed, and added a heater to keep it warm. While it has gotten freezing over the last couple of nights, I don't think it was frost. I don't think so, anyway, that caught this. I think this is just a bad glue joint on my behalf. You can see the um, primer, which is purple, at one end, but the blue, which is the adhesive, the cement, is not making good contact there, so I think I can fix that. Now the reason why I'm making this video is not because I think this is a particularly interesting problem, but the problems that I ran into along the way. So to understand those, it might be good to explain a little bit about how this system works. Behind this wall back here, we have our pond, and here is our pump. It runs on 220, um, I think it's a one and a half horse pump with a double impeller, and it, whenever it turns on, it pumps water out and it goes into this pressure tank. Now. The pressure tank uh, has a switch, a pressure triggered switch, which is that grey box there, and that will turn the pump on if the pressure is below the top limit, which is 100 psi. But if it gets below the bottom limit, which is 80 psi, um, it'll still be running until it tries to get up to 100. But if it drop, the pressure drops below 80, the, the entire system turns off. If you see down here, I think I may have got that wrong, but I'll put text over the screen explaining it better. <clears throat> the pressure in the tank is currently zero. Uh, that's because there's a big hole in the system. And uh, that's why the pressure is zero. But when I went, first went to fix this and replace that pipe, um, the way the you actuate the pressure switch when it's in the fail mode below the minimum threshold is there's a little lever there and that turns the pump on and you hold it until it gets up to the minimum pressure. Now the reason why it cuts off when it gets below minimum pressure is for situations like this, where if a pipe bursts, you don't want the pump to be continuously running, um, and that'll just wear out the pump. Now the reason why you have the pressure tank is sort of to even out um, the demand requirements. You don't want the pump to be cycling on and off, so if you're just going to be using a little bit of water, there is an air bladder up there, and you can see there's a Schrader valve at the top for pressurizing that. That air bladder applies pressure to the water. Uh, that pressure, well, I guess is originally provided by the, the, the pump. Anyway, it pushes up against that air bladder. When there's demand on this side, the air bladder pushes the water up to the system. So when I first went to fix this, I replaced that pipe, um, flipped the switch, and it did not work. Uh, the interesting problem there was there is a circuit box, not a circuit box, a, a breaker box on the outside of this wall. And that then runs up a circuit that goes underground all the way up to the house up yonder there, which you can't see. Neither of the breakers had tripped, but we weren't getting enough voltage to run this pump. As I said, this is 220, so two hots coming in at 120 each on either ends of the AC cycle. One of them was only measuring, was measuring 120 on one phase. Well, it's not really a phase, but on one hot was measuring at 120. The other was only measuring at 60. Uh, so this pump was not getting enough voltage um, and consequently enough power 
to turn over. And so I managed to isolate that to a breaker that was broken. And uh, I might take you back to the shop and we'll diagnose and see what happened to that breaker. But anyway, so I replaced the breaker and uh, came to turn the pump on. This time you flip the switch, the pump was running, but not water was coming through. And so it was pretty clear that you could just by the sound that the impeller was making, that it was sucking air rather than water. So there's a line that goes downhill to the pond and the pump had lost prime. You know, all the water that was inside the impeller chamber had gone out, either had leaked out, um, but had just gone out. And air being a compressible fluid, unlike uh, water, which is incompressible, within normal limits, this pump just can't pull a vacuum big enough to bring the water up the hill. So you take off that guy there and you prime the pump. Apologies for the uh, very 80s uh, shimmering glow. I just dropped my phone in my bucket of pond water that I was using to prime the pump. Um, I replaced the breaker, turned on the pressure switch. The pump ran, but wasn't building pressure in the tank. So I figured I should check for prime. It was empty, it's now primed. Hopefully this will fix it. There we go. Building pressure. Of course, that pressure will all go upstream, given that that's open. Shut that. See if we can build it up enough. Um, that capped out at 40 psi and this thing's supposed to go up to 100 psi so that was my next problem and so it turned out this air this there's like a rubber membrane that holds the air bladder um or a rubber membrane that is the air bladder um, it had a leak in it and there was only 40 psi in here so no matter how much pressure was coming out here that's all that was going up to there so i had to reinflate the pressure tank with air using my compressor to like you know 75 psi which is the just a little bit below the bottom end of that pressure switch up there and that was then enabled to sustain the pressure so that the pump would go so what i thought was originally just a broken pipe problem from ice turned out to be slightly more interesting than that and now rather than making this video about my huge success i am now faced with the fact that my cement didn't adhere at least i think that's the problem and i'm gonna have to fix that it's broken and needs some more repair welcome to the sunny world of tomorrow uh with weather like this you can see why i was fooled into thinking that it'd be okay to turn on the irrigation system without it freezing heck i didn't even need my hat um but of course yesterday everything was covered in a thick layer of snow as you can see, there's still some on the ground. Um, but I've slept on it, and I was debating between whether just re-gluing that broken joint back together or remaking the entire thing. And I think I'd just be tempting fate if I re-glued it. So I'm gonna remake that entire section that goes from the pump to the pressure tank.
Okay, we have everything re-cemented together. Um, I'm going to wait at least half an hour before pressurizing this. So uh, let's go look at some other stuff. I thought I'd try and check out this breaker, the one that was acting up where uh, one of the poles was putting out 120, but the other one was putting out more like 60 volts. Now, I've never taken apart a breaker, and honestly, I haven't really thought much about how they work. This is a 60 amp, 240 volt breaker. The two hots are here. It connects to the two bus bars in your breaker box there. And my assumption, I guess, is there's like an electromagnet a coil in here. The magnetic field of a coil um, is proportional to the current. When the current gets high, uh, that makes a stronger pull and it will break the switch. That's on, that's off. I'm curious to see if that's actually what's going on in there. Maybe it's some thermal thing, maybe it's some sort of magic altogether. We're in the off position. The on position. Hmm. I thought I'd measure continuity when it's in the on position. Alright, so when that one's in the on position, this guy works. Let's double check this guy. Nada. Nothing. Alright. I wonder how I was reading 60 volts down at the pump house. Maybe it's just intermittent and flaky. You know, if this thing is switching, I don't know what the number of expected cycles before failure is on this, but when these things switching you know, in an overcurrent situation, which probably happened when the pump situation failed, it's going to make a fair amount of an arc. 60 volts, so 60 amps, so it's a good welding amperage, uh, but that's it, you know, 120 volts per pole. Anyway, um, let's stop rambling and work out how to take this apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I think I may have found the bug in the system. I don't know if you can see that. little guy. We have a stink bug. Can you see him? Hmm. Living up to his name. He's not doing so well. But uh, I don't know if that would be the actual cause of failure because being in the near of a 60 amp flash in the vicinity would probably be fatal. I'm very perplexed as to this mechanism. Alright, so I think it would have been good if I didn't spring or sprung everything out. But that contact is made and does that spring that way? Let's see if I can remove the other side more gently. Right, we are more cleanly disassembled. Cleanly. I'm not sure if the stink bug in the first one, which was around here, uh, was a cause for concern, but we definitely have nests made out of mud. 
Oh, and one, two stink bugs. Three stink bugs. Sorry, little guys. Um, and a bunch of gunk. Probably not optimal for correct functioning of a breaker. It has been an hour and I was hoping to film switching it on but I already did that so I'll turn it back on, it all works, it's good. So I've come back to the pump house. I've brought my inspector with me, hoping to get a passing grade on the inspection. But we opened up the door, and let me spin around the camera and show you what we see. Haha, -ha, we're in the same situation again. It's broken, it needs some more repair. Almost the same. It's broken there and there. You know, I was boasting this morning about how warm it was, but it's actually only 46 degrees out. I let it dry for an hour, um, but I reread the tin and it says cure of time is two hours at 60 degrees. So maybe the problem is that this cement isn't curing and that's why it's failing. Uh, 100 psi is a lot of force. That's a one inch diameter pipe, so half inch radius, so like 75 pounds of force. Um, well, a lot of it gets diverted around. But anyway, there's a lot of thwacking going on there. I'm going to try and just give this a clean and reattach the pieces and hope that it works. If not, I'll do this all again from scratch. But uh, this goes to show that even the simplest tasks can be cocked up uh, when an idiot is left to do them. You know, I'm going to glue this up and uh, hopefully this will hold. What are you doing, buddy? You little forest lamb. A little bit chilly. Should we go inside? That's not a nipple, that's eucalyptus. It's broken, it needs some more repair.